thankfully, the chances of the Earth colliding with a black hole might as well be zero. And this is good because otherwise, none of us would make it. Even the black holes that are closest to us are simply too distant to affect our solar system. This brings up an interesting question though. What is the closest known black hole to us here on Earth? A good first thought to this could be Sagittarius A star, which is the supermassive black hole found at the center of our Milky Way galaxy. We got our first image of it back in 2024, which can be seen here. When I looked it up though, I found that it is still quite far away from us, coming in at 26,670 light years. Going into this, I had a feeling there may be some closer that we know about. And this led me to the Gaia mission, and more specifically, the Gaia BH-1 system. Before we look more at the Gaia BH-1 system and its black hole, let's look more at the Gaia mission whose data helped discover it. Launched in 2013 by the European Space Agency and located at the Sun-Earth L2 Lagrange point, it has a rather interesting goal which is to help create the most precise 3D map of the Milky Way. It has been doing this by conducting a survey of stars in our galaxy, and it has looked at around 2 billion stars so far, making around 3 trillion observations of those stars. Now, while this has been wonderful for the mission's primary science goals, it also comes with the bonus of discovering things it may not initially have been looking for. This is what leads us to Gaia BH-1. It was discovered in 2022 by Kareem El Badri, who led a team of astronomers at the Max Planck Institute for Astronomy. The group used data from the Gaia mission to achieve this. As we learned earlier, the Gaia mission surveys many stars. What the team noticed is that one of those stars had a unique wobble to it, which indicated that it was orbiting a massive object. They could rule out a double star system because the companion object was not emitting any light. This left really only one good option. The star was orbiting a black hole. What they had stumbled upon here was a new population of black holes. You might be wondering, what separates this new group of black holes from the ones we already know about? The answer turns out to be the black hole's wide separation from their companion stars. It is likely that they have a different formation history than something like an X-ray binary. Let's review what an X-ray binary is. This type of system generally has one object that is steadily losing its matter to another object. We can call these the donor and the accretor. The donor is usually a main sequence star, while the accretor can be a white dwarf, a neutron star, or a black hole. The matter falling into the accretor is where many of the X-ray emission comes from. But Gaia BH1 is different. The black hole is totally dark in all wavelengths of the electromagnetic spectrum. This means that it is far enough away from its companion star that it is not pulling over any of its material. And so if not for the star's detected wobble, we may never even have known that a black hole was there to begin with. It is starting to turn out though that this new type of system for black holes may be even more common in our universe than their X-ray counterparts. In fact, we have already detected more than just one system that's like this. Located 1,500 miles away from us. Wait a second, what? 1,500 miles? We don't have any black holes 1,500 miles away from us. It's 1,500 light years. Look at this, Gaia BH-1, 1,500 light years. Man, even the script has it right. Gaia BH-1 is the closest known black hole to Earth. 
It is likely a stellar mass black hole with roughly 9.62 solar masses. And it is in orbit with a companion G-type main sequence star, which is quite similar to our sun and comes in at around 0.93 solar masses. Here we can see what this orbit might look like. This shows us that the star is quite far away from the black hole and that its orbit is eccentric, meaning it is not a perfect circle. While the black hole is closer to wobbling than to a proper orbit, we can also see just how close the center of mass for the system is to the black hole. The orbital period of this system is 185.59 days, and that was calculated using a technique known as radial velocity. The black hole was also independently detected by a second team, though they found slightly different parameters, but at the end of the day, that really helps confirm that it actually is there. Let's look at some other systems that are like this one, such as Gaia BH2. Now this system is around 3,800 light years away from Earth, which makes it the third closest black hole to us. It consists of a red giant star that is about 1.17 solar masses. Something interesting about this star is that it is enriched in alpha elements. These elements are heavier than hydrogen and helium, and their atomic numbers are multiples of two. It is believed this occurred from it undergoing mass transfer with another star. Now for the black hole in this system, it comes in at around 8.94 solar masses, making it another stellar mass black hole. The gravitational radius of this black hole is likely around 16.4 miles. These are the two closest... Wait a second. Hold on here. We have the closest known black hole to Earth now, and then we have the third closest known black hole to Earth now. Wait a second. We, we seem to be missing one. Gaia BH3, you say? This leads us to our last system for today, Gaia BH3. Now, of the three systems, I think this one might be my favorite. It is located around 1,926 light years away from Earth, and it consists of a G-type star and a stellar mass black hole. These two orbit around the system's bare center every 11.6 years, and their orbital distance moves between 4.5 to 29 astronomical units away from each other. In our solar system, that would be kind of like jumping from Jupiter on one end of the orbit all the way over to Neptune on the other end of the orbit. What I find really cool about Gaia BH3, though, is its black hole. It was discovered in the preliminary astrometric data being prepared for Gaia's data release 4. And it is the heaviest known stellar mass black hole in the Milky Way galaxy, coming in at around 32.70 solar masses. This system is part of an old star cluster that at some point was disrupted, and today is a halo stellar stream called ED2. This stream is very old, around 13 billion years, and with it, Gaia BH3. Its companion star is metal poor, meaning it lacks heavy metals, possibly from forming in the early universe when no such metals had been fused yet. And this may also give us a hint towards the formation of the black hole, as these larger stellar mass black holes are thought to have formed by the collapse of a metal poor star, such as the counterpart 
in its system. Only much, much, much bigger. Gotta say, though, pretty cool stuff there. On January 15th, 2025, so the year this was recorded, the Gaia mission officially came to a close when ESA ended its science operations. The spacecraft underwent some testing before being moved into a stable retirement orbit. This happened on March 27th, 2025. Even with this, though, the legacy of Gaia is not over. We have yet to see all the data it gathered. From what I can find, we will still get two more releases from data that it pulled in. Release 4 will be based off 66 months of data and is set to come out sometime in 2026. It was also this release set that brought us Gaia BH3. Then we have release 5, which will encompass all of the mission's data. But this one is not expected until more around 2030. Still though, a lot to come and pour over from the Gaia mission. While I am happy to hear that none of these black holes are about to swallow up the Earth, I also think that black holes are one of the coolest things out there in space. And with the help of missions like Gaia, we are learning more and more about them. In fact, I would not be surprised at all if more systems like the ones we covered today are discovered from the remaining Gaia data to come during these upcoming releases 4 and 5. Who knows what other cool discoveries we might make right along with that. Uh, I hope you've learned something, if you enjoy my videos in general, or if you're just curious to see what else I might have in the future, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Give the video a like, leave a comment, correct me if I got something wrong, come say hi. But with that, let us all step outside tonight and look towards the stars.